From the Classic 107 Studios in downtown Winnipeg, 107 Live for Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance. The playing of Guy Few in the classic 107 studio. A little bit of Brandenburg to begin this four o'clock hour of the Diamond Lane. I'm joined by Guy Few now for a little bit of a conversation. Hey, hey, how well, are so, you? oh, I'm doing very <laughs> well. Such a pleasure having you here in the studio. Thank uh, you. I mean, you're you're a multi instrumentalist. You, you play piano. You you play the cornet. You play trumpet. You, you 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 really do it all. I mean, there's a little bit of singing in there too. We were just singing along to Julie Andrews as we that music were. was coming in. <laughs> I, I want to begin by asking: Do you dance too? You could be like a quintuple. I did take ballroom threat. when I was uh, a little <laughs> bit uh, younger, uh, under stress, and uh, it was great fun. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure it was. Uh, so you're in town to perform with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra, their concert number four, entitled "Brass Pageant." You were last in the Classic 107 studio a few years ago. Mm. Um, Bill Richardson was hosting at the time. Right. Yeah, just a, a real legend. And, and you were in with Nadina Mackie Jackson, the great bassoonist. Mm. Um, one of the things that she'd mentioned in the interview, I, I was listening to it, it's a, a great interview. It has to be one of our most insightful and hilarious. But mm. one of the things that she mentioned is that coming to Winnipeg for you is a little bit like a homecoming. I was Absolutely. wondering if you could speak to that a little bit, your, your relationship with the city. Well, you know, it's uh, from the time that I was... Oh, gosh, about maybe uh, 14 years old. I would fly every week from Saskatoon to Winnipeg for my trumpet lessons. Mm -hmm. And I studied with Ramon Parcells, who was at that time principal of the orchestra, and and stay at his house sometimes. And other yeah. times I would fly in in the morning, have two lessons, uh, go to the first half of whatever concert was on Going the on. hall and then go to the airport and fly home. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. just talk about talk about busy times. How, how did that connection get established when you were a kid? Somebody uh, told me that I needed to to find a different teacher. Uh, and I think it was my present my teacher at the time yeah. and told me that I needed to to kind of throw out my net and find somebody uh, really spectacular. And all of the reviews came back very high for Ramon. So I studied with I came and studied with him and and uh, it was an incredible experience. What a wonderful teacher. Oh, uh, the other thing, too, is that, I mean, th that relationship with Winnipeg has always been there, right? You performed mm -hmm. with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra before, and it's such a pleasure yes. having you back for, for this performance. Yeah. Oh, it's great to be here, and the orchestra, of course, sounds wonderful, and and uh, it's wonderful to have Alexander uh, Weissman leading us from the harpsichord mm -hmm. for this concert. So it's, it's a great mix. Uh, we're going to get to the concert a little bit more in the future, but I just want to... Uh, chat about you and, and your upbringing, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Be, being a multi-instrumentalist, I mean, that that's not an easy thing. And I feel like so often when kids are young, they have to decide, right? Like, are you going to do hockey or are you going to do soccer? Are you going to play right. piano or are you going to play <laughs> trumpet? You, you just couldn't decide? Or how, how did that happen? How did that come about? I started piano when I was four. Yeah. And, and uh, then trumpet. Uh, and all of the time I was singing, and there was a time I remember doing uh, some kind of applying for some big grant and somebody said, you know, you need to decide mm. which of these instruments that you're going to do. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't. Hmm. I don't need to decide that. And looking back, uh, when we think about that in retrospect, I think that it really would have not been the best thing for me to, to be a single instrumentalist. And it, I think my life is much more exciting this way. 
and the the exciting thing is that you continue to to cultivate all of those passions, right? I mean, like right. uh, for me as well. I mean, I, I played piano, but I also sang, and mm. I, I still sing. I, sometimes I leave my mic on in the studio and I, I sing along as the music's playing to the the chagrin of our music director and, and as, <laughs> as things are going on. Wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get the get the big knock at the door. But but have there been any particular challenges being a multi instrumentalist? Like so often we focus on the positive and how much that enhances. You know, you can look at how you play piano and. and and that influences how you play trumpet and how that influences how you sing. Mm -hmm. Have there been any challenges, though? There are challenges. I, I think you're absolutely right that, that one instrument informs the other. Yeah. For me, the challenges come down to time, uh. come down to scheduling. So I need to find the time to put in the hours as a pianist to be ready for a recital mm -hmm. or a new concerto or something like that. And for something like some, uh, one of the pieces we're doing tomorrow, Brandenburg, you need a six week uh, advance preparation mm -hmm. time really to make it work well. And that's hard to do when there are other concerts in between. We were chatting off the air a little bit, and this is this is a particular busy season for you. I mean, mm -hmm. it is for, for many. We're lucky to have many come into the studio and, and give a live performance, taking time out of this busy December schedule. But this one's been particularly busy for you between teaching at Wilfrid Laurier and, yeah. and other concerti that you've got going on and performances. Yeah. How do, how do you find that time, that, that work-life balance? The work-life balance comes from uh, me planning in advance. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. have to really look yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple of years in advance and say, will I have time to do this? And it can be unpredictable. From the perspective of the university, what if I get six new students rather than four? Mm. Then what happens? Yeah. And that actually happened this year. So, so uh, my schedule is heavier at the university. But is it that heavy that I can't add in other extracurricular things that I think might be good for my students, like their brass ensemble or something like that? I don't really think so. I think that it's a matter of, of working with people and then being aware enough to work with myself. So you're in town to work with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. Mm -hmm. The show is called Brass Pageant. And when I think of pageantry, I think of extravagance. I think of so much beauty. And that's why, to me, the, the Baroque really, um, it epitomizes that in a way. Ultimately, with that Brandenburg Concerto, mm -hmm. what, what can you tell me about the work? It's extremely difficult. It's very, <laughs> yep. it's very high. And it requires a compressed air process. So for me, I, I support from... Uh, I support very high, and higher than even a singer would support. Right. And and then I compress the air into short bursts of of energy. That to build that means that you have to be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. That you have to uh, be able to control your rib cage and your chest and your back, much like a singer would. And that release and pressurization at the same time is the thing that makes it work. Uh, it is a scary thing for most trumpeters, and it's always a difficult piece to do, uh, particularly in a dry environment. Mm. Um, so I have the shower running in my hotel room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it just need you need to keep the humidity up and keep everything functioning. Is that scariness also part of the enticement, though, like that oh, idea, absolutely. like to get on the stage and, and to nail it. Absolutely. There, there are a few it's a things more act. satisfying. Yeah. And, and that's uh, again, we can listen to recordings. We, we can sit there and we can critique them and it's great. But to be there for a live performance, mm -hmm. it's such a unique experience because mm -hmm. there is so much on the line. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you can't a, turn around and say, like, oh, hold on a second here. Like, yeah, let's just let's take that, that again. Yeah. Uh, and and with with Brandenburg, I think it's it's a it's pretty much a one kick of the can that's you it you don't have you don't have a lot of you can't redo it a whole bunch of times no you because you're just going to tire i mean like we're, we're super, humans it's super exhausting yeah uh, we're humans uh, one of the other things that's on the program <laughs> that actually comes right before the brandenburg it's on the first half yeah so it's in the first half is is the the neruda the johann baptiste georg yeah, neruda that I'm playing on corno de caccia that instrument the corno de caccia mm -hmm. i mean it is a horn it well, is. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it was made for me um, by a company in Germany called Tyne. And 
it was originally made for me to play all of B minor mass on piccolo trumpet except for the quonium movement huh. where I would be playing corno and then go back to playing piccolo. Uh, and then I played all of the Bach cantatas that have corno uh, in it as well during a time that I was principal trumpet for the Oregon Bach Festival in mm -hmm. the United States. Um, also, that instrument, since I am no longer playing for the Oregon Bach Festival, they, uh, that instrument is in my hands and because of their generosity. Yeah. So I am playing it uh, regularly, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful instrument. It's handmade, um, wow. and the quality of sound is really quite stunning. The corno de caccia is like a little hunting horn, right? <laughs> yes, this one has valves. Oh, okay. Um, uh, because it's a modern version. Right. And it, uh, my hand does not go in the bell like one would expect mm -hmm. with a French horn. Rather, I, I hold it with my right and left hands, uh, and the sound uh, goes through the bell without any obstruction. So uh, one of the reasons why I, I think, again, seeing this happen live is the actual sound that it creates, right? You described it as a, a plush sound? It's very plushy. It's, 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 uh, it's a sexy sound. Yeah. 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 So go, go check it out. I mean, you get a whole, <laughs> whole concerto of a sexy yeah. sounding plush instrument. It's really something. Uh, the, the, is it also like a period-ish sound, though? I mean, in terms of that uniqueness? I wouldn't, because it's a modern instrument, yeah, it, I would, it won't I be. I, I'm very a particular about period sounds versus modern sounds and so I when I because I play period instruments so when I hear a modern take on a corno de caccia I don't hear it as a period sound rather I hear it as a sound unto itself and and I think of it as as just like hearing a modern violin playing versus a period violin right. with period bow Right, the quality of sound and the <clears throat> that sense of attack and the structure of the sound is different. So, when looking at modernity, I mean, if you if you read through your resume, which is oh so extensive and, and rightfully so, one of the biggest things that keeps coming back in terms of this artistic mandate is new music. Mm -hmm. What is it about new music that I mean, you've premiered new music, you've had works commissioned and, and written for you. Right. What is it about new music that excites you as a as a performer and as a music maker? Well, I think just. Uh, as with Baroque music, the for me, the excitement is to play both sides of the fence, uh, of the musical fence. So I play, uh, I like to play things that are old, that inform the, the, the classical repertoire, and things that are very new that look to the future. So I, when I play contemporary repertoire and commission it, I, I want to discover something that I haven't discovered before. And that's something that so many musicians are, are searching for, right? Just Absolutely, that, that realization yeah. and, and finding things. I mean, it, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, there is a, a new work that is premiering, the music of David Raphael Scott, a Winnipegger. It's going to be a world premiere at the show. Mm. Now, I know you're not performing in it. I don't play in it, no. But, I mean, you're still going to be there for it. Another world Absolutely. premiere to, to add to the belt and, and to discover <laughs> something new. Uh, the last thing that I want to ask you, you've been so generous with your time today, is um, in the midst of all those other things, teaching, lecturing, playing, uh, premiering works, like we were just saying, do you get a chance to to lay low this time of year at all? Do you get to spend a little bit of time with family and friends? I hopefully I <laughs> I uh, go back to Ontario and then fly out to Saskatchewan to do uh, the thirtieth my thirtieth time doing uh, what I consider to be one of the best Christmas shows in Canada, uh, which is called uh, Christmas Memories, and. That show will be at the concert hall in Saskatoon. We do about 2,000 people a night, wow. and it's a wonderful, wonderful program. So I'll be there next week doing that, and then uh, I fly back to Ontario on the 23rd afternoon, I think. So that gives me about uh, 24 hours, no, less than 24 hours to help my mom. Yeah, yeah, that, and get things ready. I was going to say, does it give you like just enough time to do a little bit of baking? I was just on your website oh, taking I, yeah. notes on your grandma's shortbread <laughs> recipe. Isn't it great? Yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it right here. Yeah, yeah. 350 uh, degrees, 20, uh, 12 oh, you to know 15 it, minutes. You know it. It's a, I made it just uh, two days ago because I, I, my students ate the last batch, so I had to make, so to uh, rave reviews. Yes, so I needed <laughs> to make some more. <laughs> well, guys, it's been it's been such a pleasure having you here in the studio. Uh, Thank you. What, would you mind playing one more? 
No, absolutely not. It'd be a great pleasure. Oh, well, okay. Let me set you up here, then. I'm just going to let you all know that Guy Few is in town to perform with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. The concert begins at 7.30 p.m. on December 13th, that's Wednesday, at Westminster United Church. A Baroque pageant features music of Bach, Neruda, Corelli, Scott, and Handel. For more information, you can visit the mco.ca or at classic107.com. Live is Classic 107's Intimate Concert Series, brought to you by Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance.